Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be an April favourites. I am here in my mum's room. This is my mum's bed. I'm just using it as a background because I quite like this. This is the background that I had like, I don't know, nearly a year ago. Is it nearly a year ago? That's crazy. Wow. So I just wanted to come here again and film some videos. Today's video is my April favourites and I'm just going to discuss a few things with you. There isn't actually that much this month. It's mainly kind of makeup products. So if you're not interested in that, then just click off. But I will kind of whiz through them. You know, I'm not going to talk about them too much but just why I've been loving them. So I've got a skincare, makeup, and a few random favorites, which includes like food and TV programs, that kind of thing. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the video. So first category is skincare. And the first product in that is this Sukin Australian Signature Foaming Facial Cleanser. So this here was sent to me in my May, no, my April glossy box. I didn't actually do an April glossy box unboxing. I have for the other months of the year, apart from January because I, I didn't have the subscription then. But I didn't want to, I just didn't have time. I had a lot going on. I did do an update video and I'll link that down below if you wanna go and watch my kind of life update video as to why I didn't post for about three weeks, but I am posting now, so don't worry. But this was sent to me in that, and honestly, I really, really like this. It says it's paraben free, it's to purify, cleanse and lightly hydrate the skin with chamomile, aloe vera, green tea and witch hazel and it's for all skin types. So basically this product has got everything in it that is kind of supposed to or claims to reduce spots, to improve your skin, get rid of kind of impurities, that kind of thing. That's what this has got in it and the fact that it's for all skin types is really, really good and I have oily skin if you didn't already know and this works very well for me. On the side, I think it's one of those products that kind of promotes natural products. It says it's naturally created with no petroleum, synthetic fragrances, no animal derivatives. It's literally got a list of what it doesn't have in it. Th that doesn't really bother me. I'm not that kind of person where, you know, I have to put natural products on my face. The only thing that I personally think with products is that they shouldn't be tested on animals. I'm not saying I don't use products that aren't, um, tested on animals because I do use you know brands that test on animals and things like that but if there was something that I would have an issue with it is that and that probably should be something that is changed because I know that a lot of brands do not test on animals so why not do that and I think in the future that will become a thing of extinction because I you know it is immoral but anyway what I find with this is that it makes my skin feel very clean and it also makes me feel as if I'm removing every little piece of makeup or anything out of my skin. And because it's natural, it just feels kind of like, it's not got a heavily fragrance to it. It's just kind of like a nice neutral facial wash. And I actually really like using this, so check it out if you would like to. Finally for skincare, it is this, which was also sent to me in my April glossy box. And this is the Dr. Botanicals P.O pomegranate superfood regenerating sleeping mask this is obviously quite small i don't think this is the full size i'm not sure i can't remember but i really like this this is a facial a facial mask that you put on at night time and you leave it overnight and then you wash your face in the morning it's not like a clay mask or anything like that it's not something that you can really visibly see it kind of reminds me of quite a thick moisturizer and I actually this works so well. My skin in the morning is so soft. So this is the kind of mask that isn't necessarily cleansing the skin and, you know, pulling out impurities. It's just kind of softening the skin and making it, you know, really smooth and excellent for makeup application afterwards. So I've been really enjoying that and I've been using it a few times a week actually. Now for makeup products. So the first one is one that I've mentioned in a favorites video before, but I just wanted to stress it again. If there's a product that I've mentioned before in a video and I mention it again, it's because I love it a lot and I want to kind of talk about it even more. And this is the Primark Primer Water. So basically it claims to hydrate and refresh, which it certainly does. I spray this onto my face before my makeup every day. I use it solemnly as a primer, nothing else. And you kind of leave it to dry for, you know, like a minute or so, and then apply makeup on top. Honestly, 
I think this works so well as a primer. I feel like my makeup applies on top of it so much better. It sticks to my skin a lot better. And, you know, some may claim, oh, it's only water with a hint of, you know, a certain product or something. But for me, I personally love this and I think it works well. So I just wanted to include that again. I then also wanted to just give a brief mention here to the beauty um, sponge from Real Techniques. Again, I know I mentioned it in last month's favorites, but I just wanted to mention it again because I feel like I didn't, you know, talk about it too much. I am obsessed with this. I'm never, ever, ever gonna go back to using a brush, I don't think. This gives the best finish. It makes your makeup look like it's not cakey. It makes it look kind of like your skin. It blends it in a lot better. It does sheer out the coverage of a foundation, which some people might not like, but I personally think that makes your makeup look better and more natural and not as cakey. And yeah, really been loving it. You do have to wet this though, like, and soak it through and squeeze it out um, for it to work properly and the most effectively and I would definitely rebuy another one of these when this one is kind of too old to use. Okay next up we have a couple of cream products. So this is from Laritzi Cosmetics. This was sent to me by it was sent to me in one of my glossy boxes, you know, previous ones. Oh my God, loads of products in my glossy box. This is like a cream um, highlighter. And this is the kind of product that I think would be good for somebody with dry skin. It's obviously like a creamy formula. And I was a bit iffy with this to start with because it has a pink undertone, which kind of does shine through on your skin. But actually I come to kind of grow to really love this. It's great for people that maybe want to intensify their highlight. So I could apply this on top of my current highlight and intensify it that little bit more. Or it good, or it's good for people who want a more natural highlight. So if you want to just wear this on its own, I might give this to my mum and see if she likes it because it is a little bit more natural or I might let her try it or whatever, even though she doesn't tend to wear highlighter, even though I think if you pop a little bit on, it can make your makeup look really good and even better. Then I've got this, which was sent to me in my April glossy box. Basically, I am showing you what's in my glossy box. That was obviously a very good month for, for things. But this is the Dr. Pore Pore Hot Pink Balm. It's a multi-purpose soothing balm with natural pore pore. What is that pow pow? Am I reading that wrong? I'm sorry if I am. It says it's for lips, cheeks, and cosmetic finishing with a hint of a tint. And it's fragrance free. And it's also cruelty free and vegan. So I first of all really like the packaging. When this actually comes out on the skin, it is actually really, really pink. I'll try and show you on the back of my hand kind of briefly, just a little bit. So that's kind of what it looks like. I'm sorry if you can't see very well. But I actually use this as blusher. I did use this, um, as a lipstick and I don't like the colour, I think it's too pink, too bright, you know, it's not really my thing. But as a blusher, it actually blends out really, really nicely. You can put some on and if you keep tapping and tapping and tapping, it eventually blends in. It has a slight shine to it and it just looks really natural and really nice. And in combination with this highlighter, they look really good together. So that's what I like that for. And I think it's quite a different product, like it's quite unique, multi-purpose and I like it. Talking of blushes, I do have this, which is actually a powdered blush, and this is from Makeup Gallery. It is the Makeup Gallery Soft Blush, in the, it's in the shade Soft Blush number one, and this is what it looks like. It's just quite a kind of toned down, peachy pinky shade. I tend to like going for kind of more peachy pinky shades when it comes to blushes because I think that looks the most sort of natural and it also looks the best on a person's kind of skin tone and I don't know I just think it blends in with bronzer a lot nicer so I really really like this one. I've got it on today on my cheeks. It's very subtle and I think when it comes to blusher the subtler you go the better. So yeah really like that and obviously because it's from Poundland, Makeup Gallery in Poundland, it is only a pound. Finally, for makeup, I've got this Revolution Pro Eyebrow Pomade. I, um, a month ago or so, was dyeing my eyebrows using kind of eyebrow dyeing things from Maybelline and Revolution. I haven't dyed my eyebrows in quite some time because I've decided to kind of go a little bit more natural with my eyebrows. And I've been using this pomade, which is from Revolution in the shade Chocolate. And 
I have kind of just been kind of brushing it through my eyebrows very roughly and it's just been a quick kind of 30 second job for both eyebrows. Very simple, very quick. I actually prefer the look of more of a natural brow now. I used to really carve out my eyebrows and I just, I don't know, I wasn't too happy with kind of the finish of it. And now I am. I think the natural the better when it comes to eyebrows and I have really been enjoying using this for said thing but it does tend to dry up a little bit like in the pot and it tends to kind of get quite clumpy but doesn't seem to bother me that much because on the eyebrows it looks good even though my eyebrows are quite wild at the minute so please do excuse them I probably do need to do a little bit of plucking but I hate plucking my eyebrows because it's painful oh god anyway sorry to moan oh I'm just grabbing something that is over the uh, uh. There we go, there we go. Okay, so I do have one food favourite this month and it is this, um, these M&S Double Chocolate Mini Bites. Extremely chocolatey. It says each one is 86 calories. Not too bad, not too bad. This is what they look like. They're like little things. Mum got me this as part of like a few different things that she got me for Easter. She got me like, does anybody know those Colin the Caterpillar like little chocolate mini roll thingies from M&S? If you haven't tried them, go and try them. You're missing out. They're amazing. They taste so good. These are kind of similar to those actually, um, but they taste so nice. It's just one of those things where after a meal, I tend to have a little bit of a sweet tooth. So I will just want something small. I'm the kind of person that doesn't need to, you know, my dad will literally eat sweet stuff, you know, all throughout the evening. He'll be fine throughout the day, but as soon as he's eating his tea, he'll have like five different puddings. And it's just, it's just not even funny, basically. Whereas I'm the kind of person that can happily have my food and then have something little. I can literally just eat one of these and that's it. And, you know, not too bad. So these have actually lasted me quite some time, but they taste so good. So M&S, double chocolate mini bites, go and get them. Okay, and just to finish off, there's three kind of last sort of random favourites. The first one is... I've actually managed to get into a good workout routine and it's a workout routine that I made up myself based on things that I already knew and have done from watching workout videos but I made up the routine myself it's abs, bum, legs, arms you know just a bit of everything really it's not really cardio it's mainly focused on toning but I know that toning um, sort of workout and exercises is what's most effective for me. I did put on a little bit of weight going to uni. You know, when I first started uni, I put on a little bit of weight and I just wanted to shift that. But I did, I was recently ill and I literally didn't eat for like three or four days or barely ate a thing. So I lost half a stone over that period of four days. And then since then, I kind of shrunk my stomach. So I haven't been eating as much even so since then. And... I've kind of got into a bit of a workout routine, I've started toning up and I've lost a further, I would say another half stone. I, I have lost a stone somehow over two weeks. So I will make a video if I lose some more on kind of how I lost weight and how, you know, my what I eat in a day, my workout routine. But I just wanted to include that in this video because I think it's important to talk about working out for a you know how you want to look and also your mental health I will do a video on that because I know how important workouts are for your mind as well as how you want to look and how you want to feel so yeah just wanted to include that in this video two programs that I've really liked watching is a bad education on Netflix I've been watching that recently I know it's been out for quite some time I did watch an episode a few years ago didn't like it thought you know I didn't actually personally like what's the main character called what's his real name Jack Whitehall I never liked him yeah I never used to like him I didn't find him funny but now I've watched a few more episodes I actually do quite like the, the you know the program I have also been watching the thin blue line now you probably don't know what that is or maybe you do please let me know but basically it's quite old series now and it's about the it's kind of it's got Rowan Atkinson as the main character so if you like Rowan Atkinson then you'll like this he's not you know playing Mr Bean or anything like that but he is that like the head or the 
what is it they're like the chief constable or something of a police station and it's really funny it is a comedy and I used to watch it when I was like younger as a child so I've started watching things that I was watching as a child now and I've really been enjoying it so I've really liked watching that this month so that is about everything this month and I will update you on kind of you know there's not really an event favorite this month because I've been doing assignments and things like that so maybe next month there'll be something else I can you know include in the video but thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoyed seeing what I liked this month I know it was mainly makeup based and there wasn't any fashion or anything like that but what can you do it's my favorites for the month so give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it please do subscribe for more content on my channel and I will see you very soon goodbye